Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I thank you for the opportunity to testify before your committee on the Department of Energy, specifically on the Yucca Mountain decision. I have been in Congress now for 12 and a half years. For eight and a half years, I have served on the Appropriations Committee and the Subcommittee on Energy and Water Development, which funds the DOE, including the DOE's Nuclear Energy Division. In my short time in Congress, there have been three administrations, four or five Secretaries of Energy, and numerous nuclear energy administrators and undersecretaries. Each administration has its own priorities concerning the direction the Department takes with respect to addressing the energy needs of our country, particularly nuclear energy. I lived through the IFR bubble, uh, the GNEP bubble, the NGNP bubble, and the current SMR bubble. The most frustrating dilemma I have faced is this. After spending billions of dollars going into ever-changing directions, how do you sustain a program with a 20 to 30 year lifetime frame in an environment of ever-changing policies? What can we show the taxpayers for our investments? To make it clear, it is not a problem that I blame on the DOE. New administrations and secretaries are elected and appointed to enact their vision of the future. But it is a reality that the short-term nature of our political cycles does not lend itself to solving long-term problems. One of the ways we address this dilemma is by enacting statutes passed by Congress and signed by the President. These statutes become the law of the land binding on future Congresses and administrations. No administration or Congress can unilaterally decide the law doesn't apply to them. If the administration or Congress decides it doesn't like the current law, there are ways to change it, enact a new law. Absent that, the current law binds us all. One of the most glaring decisions by the administration to ignore this fundamental principle of law is the attempt to withdraw, uh, by the administration to unilaterally withdraw the license application for Yucca Mountain currently before the NRC and to mothball Yucca Mountain. Let me be perfectly clear here. We all know why this decision was made. It wasn't about science or the suitability of Yucca Mountain or even the need for a geological repository for high-level nuclear waste. It was a promise made during the heat of a presidential campaign. campaign. It was pure politics. We could spend days debating the suitability of Yucca Mountain as a geological waste repository or the over 50 scientific studies that have been done on Yucca Mountain. Yucca Mountain. We know more about this patch of earth than probably any other patch of earth uh, in the world. We could talk about the $15 billion already spent on Yucca Mountain, the $9.5 billion collected from the utility consumers for the Nuclear Waste Fund and whether that should be paid back to the consumers, as well as the $956 million paid out as a result of the 74 lawsuits resulting from the government's failure to receive spent fuel, or the GAO investigation which concluded, quote, DOE's decision to terminate Yucca, uh, the Yucca Mountain Repository Program was made for policy reasons, not technical or safety reasons, unquote or the fact that this interpretation is supported by Volume 3 of the NRC's Safety Evaluation Report. But all of this really isn't the point. The point is the President is obligated to follow the law of the land as enacted by Congress and signed by a previous President. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act was amended in 1987 to designate Yucca Mountain as the repository for high-level nuclear waste for whatever reason. I was not a member of Congress at the time. But that law passed and Yucca Mountain became the law of the land. Following a veto by the Governor of Nevada, the House voted to override the Governor's veto by a 306 to 117 vote, and the Senate followed suit by a 60 to 36 vote. Yucca Mountain is still the law of the land. Congress has reaffirmed its position. In fact, I have with me here, and I won't ask to put them in the record because they're available. 34 recorded votes in just recent years assembled by the CRS in which Congress has reaffirmed its support for Yucca Mountain. I can't fault Secretary Chu or Secretary Lyons for pursuing this policy decision. After all, they work for the President and he made this misguided decision to ignore the law. Based on these simple facts, the NRC Licensing Board reviewed the administration's request to with withdraw the Yucca Mountain licensing application and denied that request nearly one year ago, June 29, 2010. The Commission reviewed and voted on the Licensing Board uh, decision, but has yet to release its ruling nearly a year later. The NRC is supposed to serve as an independent watchdog, which is driven by science, not politics. Unfortunately, the chairman of the NRC has lost sight of its mission in order to affect a political outcome that has eroded the reputation of the NRC at a time when the public confidence is needed most and he should be replaced. Again, I repeat, 
The issue of citing the nation's nuclear waste repository at Yucca Mountain is a matter of law, not politics. It serves as the clearest example of an ever-changing policy which is costing the taxpayers of billions of dollars and diminishing our ability to advance a long-term energy policy for our country. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for inviting us here today.